Sunny North London, our focus for our second live game of the day with Spurs hoping to climb into the top four and West Ham desperate to claw out of the bottom three. And Spurs make three changes from the defeat in Milan in the week. Fraser Forster keeping his place in goal with the continued absence of Hugo Lloris. Ben Davis comes into the back five. Perisic left out. Hoiberg returns to midfield. Pape Sarr drops down to the bench. And Richarlison starts for the first time since the World Cup with Son named on the bench for the first time since September. Uh, for West Ham United, well, Aguirre has shrugged up a groin problem and start key player for the Hammers. He's been in recent weeks. Pakatar, though, hasn't made it. Ben Rama's been left out. So two players coming into the midfield alongside Declan Rice, Thomas Socek and Flynn Downs starting just his fourth game in the Premier League. So Newcastle dropping points again yesterday. Keeps that door open for Spurs. Victory will take them above Newcastle into the top four. West Ham saw all of the bottom three win yesterday for the first time since 2015 and it's meant that they've slipped into the bottom three. A draw will be enough to see them escape this afternoon. Here is their manager David Moyes with Patrick Davison. Well David, no Pakatar but Naif Eged has made it. Uh, Skamaka on the bench, so overall a more positive picture than you might have expected? Yeah, I would like to uh, Lucas Paqueta to be available, he's, uh, he's starting to come into a bit of form, but having uh, Naif back is, is positive for us. Jad Luka, just back in training, so it, it's really, really early stages for him. So I think you said in your press conference it'd be minor yeah. minutes, how long could he give you today? Uh, not, not too long, I don't think, but, uh, but look, if we need to then we'll, we'll use him, we'll certainly do that. And Flynn Downs, just his fourth Premier mm -hmm. League start, what yeah. are you hoping he'll give you? He played very well away at uh, Man United and I think at uh, Liverpool as well. We just felt as if we might have needed just something slightly different today in different positions. So uh, he's done well in training, he's a, a good prospect, so he gets a, an opportunity today. A set of results yesterday that did you no favours at all and sent you into the bottom three. Do you pay any attention to that at all? Do you try and keep it away from the players? Just shut it out completely? We can affect our own thing, so we have to, we have to go and do our job today. Okay, and in terms of that, you're just starting to look a bit like more like your old selves. Well, we hope so. Hope we can show that today. We've uh, we've been on a, a a bit better run, we've bit of momentum building. So today's a test for us, but hopefully we can add to it. Good luck. Cheers. Thank Thanks, you. Fred. Certainly improved form recently. We saw that against Chelsea last week, but they're way down on where they were at this stage last season. 17 points worse off. They've scored 22 fewer goals, which might go some way to helping explain this drop-off in the way they've scored their goals as well. From the previous two seasons, really high in all these categories, scoring headers from set pieces, goals from crosses, what we knew West Ham were really good at. But all those numbers dropping off. Does that tell us there is a big change in style for West Ham United? There is a little bit a change in style, but it also tells us that other teams are now uh, making sure that they're really well organized with set pieces. Set pieces what is, has been a big, big factor of their success. They've, they've been really structured and really like hard to beat. And when they get set pieces, they were scoring goals, especially Sujak. Um, and they are not at the moment. And, you know, the creativity has been has been far from great. So that's why they are where they are. Would you agree, if you break that down, no goals from set pieces, A, delivery is it the same? I would imagine it's the same. Another, and B, are they attacking it with the same aggression and the willing and the, the willingness to get hurt for the cause? I would say there's your problem. We need to get the top, top men scoring again, Robbie, either way, don't they? Yeah, I think that's that, that's certainly been a problem this season. I think a bonus top goal scorer with I think four, four goals. So uh, we know Antonio is going to, you know, he's not an out now goal scorer. He won't get you, you know, 15 goals a season, mm -hmm. but he, he walks half of the team. But certainly as a group, you need to be scoring more goals. Yeah, just four for Jared Bowen, who is their top scorer. Spurs have Harry Kane bang in form. He's got 17 already this season. As you well know, he is Spurs' leading scorer in history. And he loves playing against this opponent as well. Sometimes save his best for West Ham United. He scored eight goals against them in eight appearances. And he'll be looking forward to another test against the Hammers this afternoon. Kane. 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 And Kane on the turn! Rushes it home! 
Kane. And again, oh. Harry Kane! Megillon clips on across Kane! He's done it again! Harry Kane leaving West Ham in his way. It means a lot to him on this London derby. You'll never stop this thing. I will never let you go. Well, Spurs still missing uh, Benton Kerr, but Ben Davis comes in for them today. He, the last time he started at wing-back was January 2021. He might be lining up there today. Hojbjö does return to their midfield. And Richarlison gets his chance. It's his first start since the World Cup with Son left out. No Ben Rama for West Ham today. Flynn Downs starts his first game since October. And no Pakatar either. Socek was an early sub for him last week and starts in his place today. Antonio leads the line. The first visiting player to score here way back in 2019. He hasn't scored, though, since October. Christian Cellini still the man in charge for Spurs in the absence of Antonio Conte. We're going to hear from him. And Oliver Skip with Patrick Davison. Well, Christian, we know the manager's back in Italy, resting and recovering, as he should be with his family. But how involved has he still been in the preparation, but also picking this team today? No, he was uh, completely involved in the preparation of the, of the match. We transfer to Antonio during the week uh, all uh, the sensation, all the feelings, uh, how the player fit, uh, and we decide uh, together about the squad and the preparation of the game. OK, and also during the game, will you be able to communicate? Not directly, but uh, we will have uh, for sure some message from Antonio because uh, he's uh, ready at home to watch the game and uh, being involved uh, to, send, uh, some, to send us a message or something, something like this. Yeah, we've had messages from him all week um, and we, we have full belief in the coaching staff and I'm sure he does as well. So we'll be just looking to implement the tactics that they've been working with us in the few days after the Milan game. So the most eye-catching thing on the team sheet is no Hyung Min Son on the bench. Who's made that decision? Yeah, me, Antonio and uh, Ryan Mason. We made this decision uh, because uh, we have a big squad. We have uh, to take decision. And uh, today we want to use uh, energy. We played uh, with, uh, with Sonny many games uh, and maybe this game uh, could be uh, time also to have some need during the match and the reason we have the big squad is this. Of course he came off the bench and scored a hat-trick last time he was left out so you're hoping for a similar reaction? Yeah, yeah. we hope uh, every time that our player that come in uh, from the bench change the game and give us uh, what we need. And, and overall hoping for a reaction not necessarily from Milan but from the game at Leicester last weekend? Yeah. We need a reaction, we play at home, and we want to, to perform well from the start. Yes, that was September, the last time that Son was left out against Leicester City, he came on and scored a hat-trick. But do you think, Robbie, that this was a matter of when rather than if? Yeah, I think so. I mean, listen, we all know he hasn't been up to the standard that he was, uh, certainly, certainly last season. Um, whether that's something got to do with his injury, uh, I played with a mask and it did take me uh, a while to really get into it. It's very difficult to play with, but listen, make no excuses. He hasn't certainly been himself. But, so how will uh, he change the front line, do you think, today? Well, I think he'll probably play in the same position as, as, uh, as Son does. Uh, him and Harry could swap at times as well. Uh, Harry dropping a little bit deeper. Um, but listen, he deserves an opportunity. I mean, he paid 60 million for him. He's Brazil's number nine. Yes, he hasn't scored in, in, in the Premier League as, as of yet. Um, and he's been chomping at the bit, certainly in the last few weeks, you see his frustration when he, uh, when he didn't come on and he, the last few minutes he came on, he was, he was getting annoyed and he was getting angry. So he deserves the, deserved the opportunity and uh, hopefully he, he does the business. We today. certainly know for sure, Graham, that they can rely on the goals of Harry Kane, who just moments ago, beneath us, has uh, been introduced to Irene Greaves and Ledley King, a Spurs legend. And this means so much to Harry Kane. Breaking that record that belonged for so long to the great Jimmy Greaves. And his family, I'm sure, will be so proud. 
of his achievements and those of Harry Kane, who has managed to surpass that in recent weeks. Did it in that game against Manchester City here, didn't he? Special moment for him and his family. Yeah, tremendous. Um, I mean, warm breaking records. Um, but just again, you spoke about Jimmy Hughes. There's, there's only one Jimmy Hughes. No one ever matched that record. His goals and his career in English football. Just a, a unique individual. But he is, he's a Spurs great. That's confirmed. I don't think only Spurs great. I, I think he is, he's something else. You know, uh, Premier League, he's. I think he's a world class player. He's a world class player. Um, it's just a pity that he doesn't have. Uh, as many trophies behind his name yet, but he, uh, if I look at him, <laughs> how he plays, no, yeah. It, Sounds it, like it, another it, chat for later, Jim. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Put that on my but, list. <laughs> no, but, but, but when I look at him, how he scores goals and how he creates goals, you know, um, he can score any kind of goal, any kind of goal. And he's, um, I have to say, as a, as an ex-striker, he's really, really, really... Lovely moment that, though, wasn't it, for the Kane family, for the Greaves family as well, and for the Spurs fans who think so much of both of those great goal-scoring idols. But will Harry Kane's goals manage to see off the hammers this afternoon? Our live action is on the way. You'll never